You mentioned before that over the the last few decades, there's been a lot of interest in um, creatine and other aspects of health outside of of muscle mass and, and strength, where a lot of the early research has been focused. And in 2019, you wrote a review about creatine and healthy aging. And one of the things that you state is that creatine supplementation can have a positive effect on aging muscle. What do you mean exactly by a positive effect on aging muscle? Yeah, it's a good question because I consider aging the fourth decade and above, and I'm 46, so I fall into that category, unfortunately. But the biological process of aging with inflam aging or, or heightened inflammation, unfortunately, we lose three things primarily from a soft tissue. We decrease strength. We now know we lose muscle mass, or you could argue lean tissue in that category. And then, of course, functional uh, ability, the ability to perform activities of daily living. And those three uh, caveats of sarcopenia really have a catastrophic effect on our ability to live long, healthy uh, uh, li lifestyles. And so, unfortunately, with exercise or lack of, we lose all three of those aspects. And then when you look at the research in younger individuals, creatine was shown to perform all three of those categories. It increased muscle strength. It had beneficial effects on muscle mass and lean tissue mass. And of course, it improved some tasks of functionality. And then when you look at the smaller body of research in older adults, sure enough, it had all those beneficial effects as well. And again, it improved measures of strength, muscle mass, lean tissue mass, and functional ability. So we theorize it has some beneficial effects for the aging body. What hasn't been shown is diagnose sarcopenic adults where we take an adult coming into the clinic and diagnose them with a specific criteria. Can creatine have specific anti-sarcopenic effects? Uh, we've applied to the government to do that study um, and we're hoping to get funding down, down the road. And that may have applications for offsetting frailty um, bed rest, long-term care facility um, uptake. So we're trying to improve healthy aging from exercise and creatine. But at the end of the day, any benefits that creatine provides, 98% is coming from resistance exercise. Maybe two to 5%, if you want to fluctuate those, is coming from creatine. You got to have the stimulus from exercise to be there. So so right now, the, the kind of body of, of research looking at this is pulling bits of information from younger adults and the effect that we see creatine has on muscle mass and strength in the context of doing resistance training. And so we're assuming that creatine has a similar effect in older people. And because we know that, you know, from the fifth decade on that people are losing a considerable amount of of muscle mass and that has a has a a, a downstream effect on metabolic health and and risk of falls that supplementing with creatine and resistance training in this population might be able to kind of curb some of that muscle loss and the risk of sarcopenia and the metabolic consequences that come with that yes that's correct just for clarification though we probably have or there is probably about 20 to 30 papers or studies specifically in older adults so we had all that just uh, justification or foundational information from younger adults but there's probably 20 to 30 studies that have looked at specifically creatine and exercise in older adults and we sort of have an emerging area uh, of response the issue with individual studies is they're usually small sample size. So that's why there's about five meta-analyses that have been published now that have looked at all the data in individual studies of older adults. And collectively, they're showing an increase in lean tissue strength and functionality. So we actually have good data in younger individuals and some emerging um, research in older adults as well. One of the things that I spoke to Stuart Phillips about with regards to the elderly and resistance training was that they, they may require more protein to get the same muscle protein synthesis response because of anabolic resistance. Is, is this a, a similar kind of scenario with regards to creatine? Is it likely that the dosing for a young or midlife adult might be different to someone that's in their fifth, sixth, seventh or eighth decade of life? Yeah, it's very plausible from three aspects. So a review we uh, published, me and Dr. Schillebeck, we clearly showed that 
the vastus lateralis or the big muscles in the quadricep when you're doing leg press or squat, they seem to be jeopardized by creatine kinetics uh, more than other muscles. So there could be some line of evidence to suggest that aging does impair creatine kinetics. So you might think, okay, they may need more. Um, and then the other lines of thought are that in a few of our studies, when we gave 0.1 gram of creatine per kilogram or about seven to eight grams a day, um, it had some potential effects on certain aspects of daily living, but we did not see an increase in lean tissue and or strength. So the theory here was that maybe you need to give more as well. So we've never specifically looked at a higher dosing study, but I will uh, uh, preface that the longest study that we've ever published just came out, and I'm sure we'll talk about this on bone, uh, where we gave about 10 to 11 grams a day for two straight years. So we theorized actually in that paper about anabolic resistance in older adults. And lo and behold, that higher dose did improve lean tissue mass and some measures of functional capacity, whereas 0.1 gram in the same population of older adults didn't. So there's a few emerging areas where we're thinking that maybe older adults might be able to respond uh, a little bit more favorably. And I would sort of use that uh, analogy with anabolic resistance. You know, when you're in your 20s and 30s, 20, 25 grams of protein seems to be very viable. When you get in the 50s and older, maybe you need 40, 45 grams or more uh, to, to overcome that anabolic resistance. Um, maybe creatine, which is very similar in the mechanisms to protein, uh, needs to be higher as well. But that's an area that our lab is currently looking at. Right. So just to kind of um, make this clear for the listener, in midlife or early adulthood, that typical creatine dose for from a muscle mass and strength point of view is usually somewhere in the ballpark of three to five grams a day right that's correct yeah and what you're saying is for someone who's older it could be seven eight grams a day or, or perhaps a little bit more yeah that's the key word there could um there is some studies that have shown five grams is very viable and effective in uh, healthy older adults uh then there's other studies that show a bit more the nice thing with the the um, design of these randomized control trials, the safety profile of creatine is, is excellent. We've looked at liver and kidney uh, for multiple years, and even at higher dosages, there's no greater adverse effects compared to placebo. So even if the individual is taking a bit more, which could lead to potentially some benefits, um, they should not experience any adverse effects. But I'm confident that if you were to take three to five grams a day, even in an older adult, that would eventually accumulate you might get a bit better response with a little bit more. Um, but now that's just on a muscle perspective. If we get into bone and brain research, that might dictate a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah.